Uh oh, Malika, he's, he's behind the camera now. He's looking at he's looking at angles. Oh, oh, he's Spielberg now. He's Spielberging this thing. What is happening? This has never happened before. You've never been behind the cameras. What's he has an opinion? Isn't this a union thing? Sit down, sir. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to It's a Hawaii Thing. I'm Lanai, and that's Brooke Lee. We got a very special guest to, uh, on the show today. Yes, we do. Uh, known her for a very long time, haven't you two? Yes. Are, are you in the same circuit? How does that pageant mean? Circuit? circuit? Like, like what's like, like a circus? Pageant circuit. Uh, no, we were in two different systems. All right. Um, she has all kinds of awards. Uh, I've known her forever. Forever, she, uh, ever? She's won a, a Regent Scholar Award. Whoop, she's whoop. A, I, one of the very few certified meteorologists. People can do the weather, but they're not meteorologists because you have to actually go to school for it. I don't know if you're saying it right. I am saying it right. Okay. She's won a Mur uh, mural award, SPJ Journalism right. Award. She's a two-time Emmy nomination. Right. Uh, winner, she's a former Miss Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Not in your thing. She's interviewed everybody from Zac Efron to Bruno Mars, Hello. Pierce Bronson. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my best friends, Malika Dudley. Aww. How are you, Malika? Hi, you're going to make me cry. Oh. I call Lanai my Hanai big brother. Right? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. You, yeah. ha you have your own show, too. What, what, tell everybody what's the name of your show. My show is called the Communification Podcast. Great name. So it's a play on words. Mm. It means the beautification of communication, but uh -huh. also the unification of community. Because those are my my goals with the podcast is to help teach people research based communication strategies. I mean, who doesn't need help with communication? Everybody. Um, <laughs> but but also right everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel like we talk about this stuff enough. You know, yeah. there's too much. There's the highlight reel of everyone's life on social media. Yeah. And we tend to forget that everyone struggles. Yeah. yeah. Like everyone. Yeah. Especially so we really now. focus on like taking the lessons and then we talk them out and we talk about how we're struggling and how we plan to use those strategies to hopefully lead better lives and communicate better. I can't wait to come go on your show because we've been talking about this. <clears throat> I um the last three months I've been in these uh your you feels session. Yeah, my feels yeah. on communication. I've been helping other people with their communication, which mm -hmm. is weird. And one of the problems I keep seeing is we're in such a communication world where I can send you an email, a text, all that. But no one ever calls. No one calls anymore. Right. And, and the emails, the texts and all get lost somewhere for some reason. If you can do it 20 times. I mean, you asked our crew here. Andrea asked everybody what they want for lunch the whole week, every day. No one responded. I responded because <laughs> it's food. Right. It's important. Andrea? No, and we're in the communication business. We are. That's good that you're doing this. I commend you for putting this show together. How's it going? Oh my gosh, so good. It launched at number 13 in the U.S. Nice. In social sciences. It's still Hawaii's number one social science podcast. I think we reached like nine in South Korea, 19 in Japan, wow. 12 in Russia. Dang. Um, yeah, so it's been going really, really well. We have like more than 160 five-star reviews. Nice. And, and we're raising money. And I think that's like the part that I'm most excited about because money makes me uncomfortable. I'm mm. a terrible business person. <laughs> yeah, it makes um, everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> Not you. It makes right? me uncomfortable too. <laughs> does it, Lenai? Oh yeah, know. it does. No okay. one wants to discuss it. Yeah, but you want yeah. to, you chasing it all the time. Uh, well, we're all chasing it in our own way, but yeah, it is, it does make people uncomfortable and mm. that's where communication get lo gets lost as True. well. True. You know? Oh, totally. Yeah. And I actually, I went to Lanai to talk to him mm. about my podcast and how to start it and, you know, the money side and that overwhelmed me so much. So I kind of just put <laughs> it to the side and just decided to invest my time and energy and money into this project because I see the vision. Like I have, I have a goal for, right. for like legacy stuff. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I was like laying in bed and I turned to my husband. I was like, what if I don't want to get sponsors, but what if I had people donate to charity and then I'll give them a pre-roll ad. And he was mm. like, you should do it. Yeah. And so I just did it. And so far with, I think, only about four or five episodes that we've done this with, we've raised more than $16,000. Jesus, we need to hire charities. you. Wow. We haven't made that much. I mean, that's like a that's like a, a version, like a better version of Patreon. Like, yeah. Because you're doing it for a charity as yeah. opposed to for people's wallets. So. Yeah, we discussed, uh, when we, before you launched this, we discussed all these different ways to do it. And it, it's... Uh, 
you know the show Aloha Challenge, who sponsors mm-hmm. this show as well. That's how that started. It was right. like we're gonna feed the kupuna, but let's give the money to the restaurants, yeah. and the restaurants can do blah blah. So, if it if it's a win win for three people, it's better yeah. than a win win for, for two or one. Yeah, which it's exactly. the whole cycle, yeah. right? Yeah. Because then the local business is giving, yeah. right? Yeah. But then they get rewarded for giving, yeah. and exactly. you give them a platform yeah. to to tell people not just that they're givers, but right. to tell people about their business. Yeah. So yeah, it's like totally just. Awesome all around. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk more about this in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Malika's hanging out with us. It's a Hawaii thing. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHI THING. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with their local favorites accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy make longs a part of your day welcome back to it's a hawaii thing brooke lanai malika hanging out with us i i call you malika dudley but it's malika dudley judd Judd. um but i'm always going to know you as like the juds yeah i mean not the ones in you know country wrestling music the ones that are on the street corners here where you can see the names and on the buildings right that juds yeah and and where are you at now malika tell everybody Where do I live? Yeah. I'm in Pukalani, Maui. I think a lot of people know that because um, this is from where I work. Yeah. Kudos, girl, by the way. Oh, my gosh. No, you have no idea. Boss girl status. Like everybody else during COVID. And, you know, I just kind of did pro bono. I do like pro bono Instagram news coverage, (laughs) basically, is what ends up happening. It just happened organically. And I did that for several months. And then KITV reached out to me to be their morning meteorologist on the weekends. And because everyone was doing weather and news and everything from home, uh, you know, it worked out. They looked outside of the box. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I have only been in studio one day, and I did it <laughs> in November. Right. <laughs> That's cool. Otherwise, it's from my porch right yeah, here. Yeah, it's so Lani, awesome. Maui. It's so awesome. It's so great. And I think especially for weather, because I'm out in the weather, and I'm yeah. able to be like, oh, let me check the temperature. You got the you. bird's eye view, too, of where well, you're living. And I get, we get mail at KHON all the time because the neighbor islands are always new hub because it's like everything you is not just, yeah. yeah, everything is not just happening on Oahu. Yeah. Like We're people living our lives yeah. on these other islands, and I, you aren't addressing it. And then to have you be there on Maui, Way like better. talking about it it's like i'm in maui and i can see your weather in honolulu because yeah. we all on the same islands so <laughs> I, I can do it just as fine from here yeah i mentioned earlier uh at the intro that you were a meteorologist did i say it correctly meteorologist meteorologist yeah yeah, yeah and and there's not a lot of people no. that are right <laughs> she's like i don't want to hate on people no, it's, but it's, yeah, people yeah, i don't want to hate on people but yeah. i will tell you um so there are weather anchors and then there are weather anchors that are trained Truth through bombs. school with yeah. meteorology. So I went to Mississippi State University's distance learning program. It was a three year intensive program and I got my certification in broadcast meteorology. Um, Paul Drews and um, Pete Caggiano also on our team are also meteorologists, but they went an extra step. They mm. are like sealed is what they call them. So okay. with the National Weather like Service. Like Mormons? With- yeah. What? <laughs> they went into a building and no one else could go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason wow. the reason I want to acknowledge it is because not everybody is and you they can trust you. That that's what the <laughs> thing. No, because look what's going on in the world right now. You got these people just well, doing news and whatever, and, and you're wondering whether is it climate, real? Climate is change it, you know? and all that stuff. So yeah. you're now a trusted. <laughs> Reporter. But let's be <laughs> let's be honest. This is how it first started here in Hawaii, right, Malika? A lot of times, Sherry Shima, a lot of people, you know, the weather girls, right? That was the always the alliteration back in the days. Yeah. It was like, oh, we're just gonna get a pretty girl to come on. She usually just won a pageant. She looks cute in her contempo casual outfit. She comes on. And she you says, said contempo casual. You know, it's balmy and the three footers <laughs> at Diamond Head. But like, you know, she's got a straight up degree because yeah. that's a thing. Because Maria Quaban is the same way you go get educated you start in the business and then you go and elevate your game and now you're like I was hired because I mean maybe because I'm a Miss Hawaii but they basically I came in for four different interviews and in the end they were like I don't know we got this box full of overqualified people and for some reason we keep coming back to you like the biggest backhanded compliment ever but 
they hired me and I, I found out later that there were whispers in the newsroom of like, oh, they just hired like their token Miss Hawaii right, and right, things right. like that. But I didn't know at the time and I've always been this way. Like I love learning. Um, I want to be a credible source. I want to be trusted. I was well aware of the stereotype mm-hmm. that you know, is given to a pageant winner right. in whatever you career do. you yeah. want to go yeah. into. And so I immediately, I, I enrolled in school. So my first three years, I literally, like between shows, I was reading weather books and, right. and taking finals. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I got to say, I was, I, was, I was lucky enough to be a, when you first started that, I would go in the studio and watch and give my feedback. She'd ask me if I could come and critique her. And you are one of the, how do you say it? The only person I know that studies and says what she's going to get. Mm. And then and then does it. <laughs> I think you even said you were going to get married at this age and you're going to have two kids <laughs> at this age. And you go and do it and you do it. You say it and you do it you is do what it. I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, One of the yeah. few people that says it and does it. Yeah. Well, Lanai, you also would give me really good advice. We would spend, those were a good five years, I think, where yeah. you and I and Brian basically spent, uh, I mean, the majority of our time five days a week, <laughs> on yeah. the planet together. Yeah. Oh, out in Makaha training. Yeah. yeah. And I would, we would jump in. So I think Lanai was at the radio station. I was doing morning show. And so one or the other would pick the other up and we would head out to Makaha and I, I would have like my hour and a half therapy session with Lanai <laughs> and he would tell me, don't get married till you're 30. <laughs> Wait, hold that I thought. Hold, hold that and, thought. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk more about Makaha and, and that whole era, era in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. It's a Hawaii thing. This show is brought to you by Atlas Construction, Hawaii's number one builder for nine years in a row. Call them at 808-951-9500 for the quality and service you deserve today. HEC Medical Clinic, Dr. Aries Oda, Hawaii's number one laser weight loss center for weight loss, reverse diabetes, and heart disease. Call today for your limited time special, only $37. Lose one to two inches instantly. Welcome back to It's a Hawaii Thing. Malika is hanging out with us. We're talking about, uh, we were going to Makaha for, for a while. Yeah, let's dig into uh, Makaha for a second. An hour drive, cause... her and I. So we spent four or five days a week together, an hour and then another hour back. Yeah, traffic. Talking and about everything. Driving. So we really got to know each other during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, tell everybody what we did. We were doing in Makaha and why the hell did we, <laughs> did we do this? I don't think there's a why. It was just it. It was joyful. It was. That's I the mean, why. We <laughs> were the weirdest like three people that you would put together. I think people were always like, "What, dude?" Ooh, when you guys what? would post, I'd be like, "What? One of these things is not like yeah. the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is yeah. happening right I now?" Mean, I actually talked about this on my podcast. Um, it was my cyberbullying episode with Lisa Chapman. She's the dog. Um, oh, dog's yeah, yeah, yeah. Daughter. Because like at the time, I mean, there were rumors going around that I was like, you know, the kind with e- either of them or both of them or whatever. Seriously? And I'm like, I didn't yeah, hear these. Like, um, no, He's like, I'm down. Like that <laughs> whatever. We, they are just my best friends and my big brothers. And we just jive. Like we just clicked and we all love the ocean and we would learn about the ocean from Brian. He's a genius. Yeah. And to just sit with him and take it all in and learn from but him. But he put you I guys mean, in some gnarly situations. Like oh, he would yeah. post stuff and I'd be like, Malika's lost her mind. What well, is she doing? I think one of the biggest things I still get uh, people make comments about is we went, the three of us went canoe surfing and it was 15 to 20 feet. Insane. Out at Miley Point. Well, no, yeah, it was Miley Point. And uh, I don't know what we were thinking, but Brian had a good way of brainwashing us to do some gnarly things. Right. We did the Molokai Channel. Yeah. How was that experience for you? We stand up paddled the Molokai Channel, by the so way. So insane. Not once, well, but and, twice. And going back to what you were saying about like, oh, people trust you because, uh, you know, you know what you're doing. Like, that's exactly how I feel about Brian. Right. It's just he is the risk management yeah, manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, expert of the world. I right. mean, like, yeah. literally, that's what he teaches. Yeah, He's and that's what he does. Yeah. And so I think I just put my tr- – I love him, you mm-hmm. know, like, and I just put my trust – in right. him like my my life right. and I would scream at the top of my lungs I'm going to die <laughs> and they would tease me about it but because I trusted him so much I just I, I literally put my life in his hands like over right. and over but and over but see that's again. a two way process because like 
if I were to take you out of the equation and maybe put myself in the situation, I don't think I would have been open enough. I can trust Brian. I love Brian dearly. I know he wouldn't ever hurt me, but it's you have to be willing to participate. And I would have been like, I love you, brah, but, but I'm no, not but doing that, that. that's the magic of what he has because he knows when to put you in the situation right. and when not to. And when you're ready. He yeah. knows when you're ready. The first yeah. time we did the channel, it was you know, you get at five o'clock in the morning, right. you leave from Molokai. I had to paddle first. You remember Malika? And those, the mm -hmm. swells were like banging five, six feet. Mm -hmm. And I was a nervous wreck and I had to go first. I threw up like three times right. and I'm paddling and Brian brings the rescue, the rescue boat around. And he's like, what's the matter? He goes, enjoy the view. <laughs> look, look at the, look at the view. Like totally took my mind off yeah, what yeah, was going yeah, on. Yeah, and yeah. then it all became better. Right. It took an hour or so. But Malika took about three hours. I cried. <laughs> oh, like, really? She was a wreck. And I couldn't stand. Yeah. I couldn't even. I was so nervous. Right. My whole body was shaking. Yeah. And, and I have this. It's like I have an anxiety thing. I, I know I speak we both in public. Do. I yeah. sing in public. Yeah, right? yeah. But it happens even when I do those things. Right. I know to prepare myself that my body is going to shake. Right. Like, it just does. Right. And I did not prepare for my body to shake like that on a board while in swell right, right the middle right. of the ocean by yourself so crazy I, so i just broke down and right. i cried and we had um i think it was lisa was there to massage yeah. us and so she just sat with me and so she massaged me wow. and the boys you know like talked me into getting back on the board and and then of course brian is just he's such like a jokester right and so and i'm very like mm. and so i needed silence right <laughs> <laughs> but but tell me when the bump is coming. Right. And so I'd be like, Brian, just tell me when the bump is coming. And I just need like bump. Right. And so he would go bump. To the point where it would like throw me off and I fall into the shark infested waters. <laughs> <laughs> when when you say funny. bump, we're talking about the swell. Oh, yeah, you know, of coming. course. Of course. But it was a, I, and I think the, the reason why it, it, we both did all three of us did it together is because we shared an anxiety. <laughs> so, you know, misery loves company. And uh, her and I was going through this anxiety. He's, he was thing, like your guys' you know? guru. He was. We're going like to talk more totally. with Malika in just a minute. we got to take a quick break. It's a Hawaii thing. We'll be right back. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Welcome back to It's a Hawaii Thing. Malika hanging out with us. We're talking about paddling the Molokai Channel. With your guru. With Brian Keolana. And, uh, you know, until I did the channel, I never had, you don't, until you do something that's so difficult, you don't have the same respect for other people who do it. Right. And then you watch people who do it now, and there's like thousands of people who do it. Right. And I even feel more <laughs> like empathy oh yeah, yeah and i also feel more embarrassed because i was like geez they can do it you know you see this 80 year old <laughs> lady pass you you know on a canoe and you're like oh my gosh was that I, that much of a mess <laughs> <laughs> but at least you did it it's like doing the triathlon yeah. but i do know? i do want to ask you this i've never asked you this what did you get out of not just learning something new is there anything specific that you always remember you got out of being in makaha every day surfing five days a week and paddling canoe we did everything that's why we you didn't got just a surf. Tan, we, that's we did for sure. everything a waterman could do in four or five years what did you get out of that um i think it's brian's outlook on life you know like work hard but play harder mm. and make your work play ah. yeah, you know when you enjoy your work you're you're not working and right. and that's really i mean i know what i'm doing right now is not the same thing as what he does right yeah. but i i feel like i take that mentality with me that okay well what do i want to do what am i good at first of all we all have gifts and skills and talents so identifying like what is it that i'm really good at and that i really enjoy and then okay how do i take this and my passion bring them together and and then what am i going to do with this moving forward how can i create a legacy how can i you know help others and and I think that's just something that just happens right. at, at Makaha. Like Uncle Buffalo and Auntie Momi, you know, they're aloha for everyone and their passion for the ocean and community. I'm going to cry. You know, <laughs> it's, it's inspiring. Yeah. 
But I think that when you guys do something that's so out of your box and yeah. your comfort level and you conquer it, everything else that comes in your path, you're oh, like, yeah. if I could do that with Brian, this I can do this. Yeah. Like if you're trying to like shake me, you can't shake me. I'm not going to get shook because yeah. I was out paddling in the middle of shark infested waters yeah. and I'm here today. For so. sure. And, and I, that's totally cool what you just said because I, I, I think the same way. The other thing I think though that I learn that I every day – it, I come across, I think, in different situations is my mind is a baby. Like my mind takes over everything. Mm. And, uh, you know, that whole thing is not physical what we did. No, it it's all mental. mental. Totally. It was 100, all mental. 10%. You know? yeah. So I'm an overthinker. <laughs> right. I learned that I'm a, oh. the biggest overthinker. But you're more overthinker than I am. <laughs> I, I sure am, but at the same time, I don't know. I have like a switch that just goes off sometimes. We all where do. I stop asking questions. Push yeah. you off I'm, of, I'm just like push you off a cliff in a in a burning car. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Well, yeah. Yes. Malika you has flipped yes. some kind of switch because you're like, okay, where are we going? Yeah, we're Brian, off the cliff. Brian, let's Brian. go. Let's I committed go. Committed to the job. You were like, they were paying me. I had to. I Selma had and to, Louise. They put fuel. Let me just let me just so nose, everyone's under uh, so understands Malika uh, Brian. Brian also uh, directed a movie and I, we all, the three of us worked on it right. and I was there and um, Malika had to jump out of a Jeep going down off of a cliff. A cliff. Yeah. And cause you were, uh, what's her name? Stunt double. Catherine McPhee. Catherine, Catherine McPhee, McPhee stunt McPhee's. double. And a, it was a burning Jeep. Yeah. It wasn't up CG. It was a real cliff. So right? all that work that Brian mentally prepared you for was for that no, movie. No, no. Okay, oh, yes, maybe over the years. Yeah. He, he yeah. mentally prepared me over the years. Yes. He told me nothing about <laughs> this <laughs> actual stunt. Yeah. I was like, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, okay. And people are like, so you've done this before. I'm like, never. Yeah. Is that a role? Nope. But we, but like, we knew you could do it. He, and he knew you could do it. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, we have so much more to talk about. We can go to oh. our uh, extended version of uh, Wait, I got to give gifts. I know. Okay. It, I'm just telling everybody as you prepare yourself. What do you got for her? Oh, I, we're 88 tees. We got shirts for you, girl. Look yes. at these. Can, Malika, tell everybody uh, where your podcast is. What's the name of where can they find it? Oh, you can find me at malikadudley.com and my podcast, everything's on there. Wait, I got the more podcast gifts. is called The Communification Podcast, but we're on every listening platform. And if you just search my name, you'll be able to find it. Very Malika easy Dudley. to find. She's and on Pigeon Instagram Moji. and Facebook. And we got some gifts for All you. All Pigeon Moji stuff. Thanks you're to Pigeon get. Moji. Thanks Thank to 88 Tees. Thank you, Malika. All the gifts. Always proud of you. Come, Love you. Come Thank to YouTube. Thank you guys for Love watching. Come to YouTube. Watch the extended version. YouTube. It's a Hawaii thing. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to It's a Hawaii Thing, okay. the extended version. Please do us a favor and subscribe. Don't Leave us a comment, comment when you get us a chance. It's uh, Malika is hanging out with us. That's Brooke. I'm Lanai. Hi. And we were talking, if you missed the uh, first part of the show, we were talking about Brian Keolana and what he's put us through. <laughs> and we did a movie, and I was trying to remember the name of the movie. You may not, you may not kiss, kiss the, the bride. bride. That's the name of the oh, movie. Well, okay. um, I think it came out on Netflix, didn't it? I think this is pretty oh, was it, Hulu? it was an independent film. Yeah, but it came on a Hulu or right. one of those. Anyway, you had to do a stunt and you were doubling Catherine McPhee, McPhee who right. was from uh, with the show. American Idol. American Idol. It's like Mad Lips. She's like a country singer. Uh, well, you could say that. She yeah. married David Foster, so she's like the singer. Yeah, yeah. But but, and uh, now she does all of the NFL jingles and stuff. Like, she's killing it right now. Okay. Anyway, Malika he was her dresses. double. They look alike. And you had to tell everybody what you did. Well, there were three stunts, actually. So the one that I trained for with Brian, and I don't know if you were with us, Lenai, that day, but we went up to Kualoa, and he had this 50-gallon drum that he had sawed You in had half. to slide down the hill and make it look like yeah. a leaf. Yeah, I helped bring it. You had yeah, to slide down a hill in a barrel. Like she was running away, and she, she had to make the barrel look like a leaf down a cliff. Why do you have to make it look like a leaf? Uh, because the grabbed. script said it was yeah. a banana leaf. Oh, got banana it. Because leaf. that's very That's so Hawaiian. authentic. Yeah. That's like a many huni. Okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're in this 50-gallon drum, and first <laughs> it was um, Brian and Craig who tried it first. Right. And, of course, they ate it big time. Oh, right? right. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, I have to do this. And so then they created like a, a pathway for it. 
Anywho, um, we ended up doing the actual stunt, and it wasn't as scary, but it I had actually injured myself in the first oh, stunt, which right. is the one we had just talked about. Yeah. The, the oh, Jeep. Uh, coming yeah. out of the Jeep. So, okay. Are you bubble so wrapped? All, <laughs> Do they have you like in like padding and stuff? Well, like, are, wait, yeah. let me just give everyone okay. a side note. Malika grew up in the karate world. So she knows she's very physical right, and knows fragile. how to fall. She right. knows how to jump. She knows how to do these things. Okay, continue. Um, yeah, that's a really good question, bro. <laughs> so the the attire was yeah. a bikini. Of course. And so course, they patriarchy. ended up creating a flesh-toned oh, um, yeah. wetsuit. Oh. And that was the only protection I had. So I had a flesh-toned wetsuit right. underneath the bikini. Right. And then it had this like... Uh, what are those called? Like like poncho Harness. type of, you know, like cover up thing. Oh. But the cover up was one of those knitted ones that had like uh, giant holes, holes in, in it. it. Right. And so I was terrified that yeah. this thing was going to catch, catch on, right. on the deep as I was jumping out. Right. But let's rewind. So I'm like getting prepared for this. They're like, okay, so you're just, you're going to jump here. And I'm like, okay, when do I know, how do I know when to jump? And Brian literally puts a rock out. And he Here's says, your marker. When you get to the rock, <laughs> yeah. you jump. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So then Craig comes over and he starts putting this like gel all over me. And I'm like, what is this? And he goes, it's fire retardant. And I'm like, why are you putting fire retardant on me? He goes, the Jeep is going to be on fire. I'm this like, is right before the scene, by the oh. way. Because if you tell her the day before, she ain't going to show up. Right. So you got to tell her it's right before the scene. <laughs> oh. It's on fire. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So he's literally putting it up my nose, down my back. Like, I mean, everywhere. I'm like dripping in fire fuel retardant stuff. Wow. So I get in and, um, and, you know, may he rest in peace. But uh, Brock, Brock was Little. my oh, driver. Little, yeah. yeah. He was the double for Dave Annabelle's character. They were the love interests. And and I definitely put 150% confidence in his yeah, abilities. Brock. So he was doing the stunt driving. Freaking almost fell out. <laughs> yeah, they had to do some go, practice runs first, of course. Uh, it's an open well, Jeep, I'm assuming. It's an open, <laughs> yeah. it's an open air open Jeep. Air Jeep. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Compl- no doors. Yeah, no right? doors. Right. Comes off the cliff. And then, uh, oh, one thing that you should know is... You need to jump out of the Jeep. Yeah, because the Jeep is going to holy muck a flip and go away. And blow up. It's going to blow up. Yeah. Because it ran into a tree (laughs) that was also rigged with explosives. (laughs) And then they were going to explode the Jeep and the tree. And we were supposed to run past this explosion. Wow. And In a bikini. Wow. Okay, cool. A bikini. (laughs) But Malika, you nailed it. You have no choice. You're going to die. You nailed it. I thought I was going to die. Of course. (laughs) I mean, love you, Bri, but. I didn't jump properly. Like, you know, I'm not a stunt person. Like, I've been in karate. I'm, you know, I'm athletic. But when I jumped, I actually ended up jumping on my feet when I should have kind of like rolled. Maybe. Rolled. And so I injured my knee. Mm. Meanwhile, I hear Brian let out this guttural primal scream. What? And I'm like, what is happening? And he's like, Brock! And so I freeze, but I know that I don't want to do this shit again. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, cameras are rolling. Right. And I'm like, okay, I got to assess the situation real quick. What's happening? I can see Brock through the smoke running down the hill. So I'm like, okay. I think he's, I think everything's fine. I'm just going to continue the scene. Right. So I ended up running past the explosion, right. meeting up with Brock. We hold hands and we run down the hill. He's helping me because I'm literally limping, limping because yeah. I just injured Your my knee, MCL. Right. So, um, and we just keep going all the way to, I'm like, when do we stop? He goes, go to the tree line. Until they, <laughs> like, until they yell cut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we go all the way into the tree line and come to find out, uh, later, Brian said that he could not see Brock. He thought that Brock had oh, was not still, gotten yeah, out of in the, the car. Because yeah, wow. there's smoke everywhere. Yeah, it yeah. was it was crazy to watch. And uh, the part where you were talking about, because it's part of the scene where you're running away and you jump on the, the leaf, We they couldn't get that right like almost the whole day. It seemed like, how do you, because you had to tie this fake leaf and they had to jump on a leaf to go down this mountain, right? Right. Um, and I got to be a part of how does that Rigging work, right? And stuff. Um, but everyone had the the most 
uh, faith in you. <laughs> Everybody knew you were going to do it. Or no else you wouldn't no have pressure. Been there. No yeah. pressure. Yeah. I, I just follow instructions. So there was this other one on the cliff, you know, like Sandy Beach, how they have that cliff yeah. right by the Love to Eternity yes. Beach. Yeah. Super honking winds. I mean, like I thought I was going to blow off of this right. cliff. And I, I don't weigh a lot. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> and um, so we're all the way out on the cliff and all the cameras are like back, you know, far away. Like the directors yeah, know you can't near fit us. It out so there anyway this whole scene is just us like right. we just have to make it happen and i'm holding like a, i'm supposed to grab a gun and like point it at the guy and like all this stuff and i've been told by my stunt coordinator brian kilana <laughs> do not run past this because he doesn't want me to fall off the cliff, cliff right right but i'm with Brock and Aiden and so we're doing the scene and they're like okay this scene we're gonna kill this scene and basically they're like run Malika run and I'm like oh shit like how do I get myself into these situations and so I, I had like this much space, space yeah before the cliff right and I ended up running past with this honking wind and you know clearly I was fine in the right. end but it was Terrible. And what are you wearing? Like five inch heels and like a black dress? Like what are you so having funny. to I'm, wear? I'm wearing like a skirt and like a of little, like a lava lava ensemble. Of course. Um, you know. And you're running on rocks in what Nikes? No, you have to run in like it's so amazing slippers? to me. This whole foot probably. You so do crazy. all this one scene that takes two days to shoot, and then they and think then it's her it's in three it. Three seconds, and then they think yeah. it's really Catherine and not you, and you're just yeah. like, you have no well, idea. No, you know what was great though in the end was they use so much of the footage mm. of the stunt footage. Cause usually it is like, Oh, a second, a right. second. Yeah. They, it's actually like seconds. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I probably have like a couple minutes of footage from just those three stunts, which was pretty cool. Well, so and yeah, insane. and you got to do three stunts, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Insane. Now you got, and now you got residuals. All y'all yeah. got residuals. <laughs> I didn't get residuals. Wow. Yeah. It was you just an independent film. So it didn't really, it was such a good movie much, though. I thought it was a good it movie. It was, yeah. it was great. I and, loved it. And then, you you know now i'm like on the list and so for hawaii Five O's finale um they need a reporter list? that could also do stunts but she, seriously yes. there's not a lot of and oh, there's not girls, a lot of women either that can do yeah the, yeah yeah i think well, for and they always just grab the hnn reporters because yeah. you know it's the same right. uh network yeah and i wasn't at kitv at the time yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah and so they were like oh malika you know and and so that was great so i got to like check that off my bucket list Aww. with the finale yeah. right and, <laughs> I, got on. and i remember um wait which season did you do the final that's what she the just final, said the oh, oh the final yeah. okay because i did the finale too but not the final final so i, I remember brian saying um Malika, you gotta do these uh, these stunts so you don't be put in the category of just surfing. pretty girls surfing. Like, surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all the girls in Hawaii that do they stunts do water. is they just, just do surfing, water stuff. Yeah. right? Not yeah, yeah. all these right. other things. So there must be like two of you. Who else? <laughs> Who, Who else? else is there? MMA fighter? I don't know. No. Elima McFarland. <laughs> she doesn't do any stunts. Really, there's not that many, right? Um, I want to switch gears real quick. You um you have this podcast. We mentioned it earlier. What is it that you discuss? She just talked oh about gosh. it. No, I know, but I want to know what what is it like? What are the the topics that you discuss? Because communication is all these different layers. It's very broad. Yeah. yeah. So so what is what are some of the topics that you discuss? So season one is communication and technology. I just felt like it was so apropos right yeah. now. Everybody, you know, moving digital and remote and how do we communicate via these new technologies? And what's so interesting is that we have this generational gap too, where, yeah. you know, you and I, right? Like we're in our thirties to fifties, right? We kind of went through this, right? but we, we're learning along the way. Then we have the younger generation who doesn't have the tools <laughs> to yeah. really know, you know, what it means to be online, but that's all they know. Yeah. And so it's, it's really interesting. We tackle all kinds of things from um, cyberbullying, sexting, um, fubbing, which is phone snubbing. So ah. that was actually what my thesis was I created on, that. What? I created that. It created what? <laughs> yeah. Fubbing? It's like ghosting. Ghosting. Yeah, right? I don't think you should be proud right? of that. No, I'm not proud really of it. I think it's a thing. But people do it, people do it and I hate it. I, I well, first of all, I don't like texting. I hate texting. Okay. It's my biggest pet peeve. But 
How else are you going to talk talk to somebody yeah, if weird, that's all they're going to do? Yeah, we text all the time. I know, but so. how, that's what I mean. What else are you going to do if that's the only way they want to communicate with right. you? You got to take what you can get. Right. But research I, shows people hate it. Yeah, and I yeah, believe they hate texting. I, this year, no, no, they hate fubbing. Oh, yeah. when if people you ghost are you. Present, like yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. we're talking. Right. But if I was like over here, yes. like yeah, 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 you know, yeah. not doing paying something. attention. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. a side, and that's why I don't like it. Number one, but number two is it everything gets misconstrued. You know, I can There's say no context. There's th- no yes, like, yeah. none at all. This year alone, at least I've had put into really bad situations with three people because just this year of alone. texting. Yeah. Cause oh, because they're misunderstanding. misunderstanding. Okay. Yeah. And I misunderstood right, them. Right, right. So it created a fight or it created a tension. Right. And then it, one one even created. I'm not talking to you anymore. Wow. You know, one of those kind of deals. Got it. But. And I would say, hey, we need to sit. You know, my mom always says, sit down, talk hold, it pono, out. Pono, you yeah, know, yeah. let's just discuss it. And if they don't want to, you cannot have a conversation yeah, yeah, with yeah, somebody yeah. who wants to text you back. Right. So, like, that's my biggest. I think you. They need to create a class in school now for this because when oh, we yeah, went to well, school, exists, we had sure. to learn it on our own, right? Um, yep. But there has to be some kind of class. Well, what's cool is in higher education, we have those classes. Yes. What we need is yeah, for more the younger generations. For everyone, which yeah. is why I created the podcast, because right. I just feel like when I would go to communication classes in college, it felt like this place, this safe space for us to learn about these things. Everybody, it didn't matter what your major was, everybody was engaged and everybody could relate to the topics of communication. And, you know, you're talking about um, the misunderstandings went via text. And it's so, so it's really interesting to kind of see what the research says about that because it really does run the gamut. I mean, some people prefer to converse via text or email because they feel like they can really, they, Maybe they're not as good at doing face-to-face communication. They can really think about their message. So right. maybe in different contexts, uh, a text or an email or some kind of a, te- you know, using technology might be better to start a conversation for some people. But then at the same time, so we did a, a, an episode on apologizing. Mm. And what came up from the researcher was just that you probably should always follow up with a face-to-face. I mean, you should try to meet people where they're at. 100%. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. Do you think when somebody, so here, here's my thing. I would, I would say something because I'm an honest person, but when you, when you read it, well, we've never really had a conversation about life. Like, like if we, we no, like, like if you're in trouble with something, you've never come to me and asked me for advice. If you came to me and asked me for advice or something, I would be so open and honest with you. Yeah. But some people will read it as a text and be like, why are you so fucking mean to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? But but you're being honest with them about something. Right. And you're not you're doing it as, as the delicate as as you can. But people misconstrued that. So my thing that I don't like is when somebody says something and they go LOL at the end. So what does that mean? Laugh out uh, loud. I know, but what does it oh. mean? You're, you're joking with me or you're trying to tell me something, but you're laughing because you don't want me to take it too serious. You have all these different things. So should you put LOL after no, every thing? No, LOL is thing? played out. Like, well, but you, you understand what, what I'm you saying. Should, yeah, what you should do is also what keeps coming up in every single episode is you need to think about the receiver. Right. It's not just about what you like with communication. Yes. And especially with people that you know well, you know, you might know, like, Brooke will know that you don't like texting. Now so I do. She might Never text him again. Now she no. knows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now if she had something important, you know, that she wanted to talk to you about, she might actually pick up the phone. But or you say, hey, let's go to lunch, Lanai. Here's the instead. No, Brooke, if you said I need to talk to you, I'm going to answer. But here's the thing. This is the generational gap. Because kids, my, my son's 14, my daughter's 7. She don't count because we don't give her a phone. But they take, if you call them, you're punching them in the face. Like, they don't want, if you call call them they're yeah, like why is I mean. my phone ringing just yeah. text me how dare you call yeah. me mm-hmm. like don't mm-hmm. interrupt my flow yeah. just text yep. me if you're calling them they're either in trouble arrested yeah. or you know what i mean it's a personal affront to call anyone under the age of 20 yeah like they mm-hmm. will literally be like how dare they hang up not yeah. even pick up the call how dare you call but we me? need to fix that we like, need to get i don't, don't know how we're gonna i don't want to hear your it. voice yeah. i want to read it and then i may show you that i read it or i may left leave you unread that's the new thing now too is like well it got sent but she didn't read it yet let me ask you this when when mm-hmm. i text you both of you when i text you I do you them. what nothing Go ahead. when i text you do you guys 
Here, this is a two-part question. When I text you guys, do you hear my voice when you read it? Like in my head? Yeah. Do you read my voice? Oh, you mean like the context and yeah. tone? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, think so. I no? mean, you're look. No offense. Just answer the question. You're not like you don't get up. Like your texts aren't like you're just very pre-functionary. When you text, it's too. You're not doing flowery Cyrano de Bergerac yeah. type I stuff. I know, but do you hear my voice? Like if we, uh, do, what I'm saying is because when you guys text me, I hear your voice. Like a crazy well, person. Like, no, like sometimes, like if you, because <laughs> Brooke complains a lot, right? So I hear voice. I that hear is your, not your text That's as a complaint. <laughs> I feel like there might be a gender difference here, like what Brooke was saying, you know. There we go. So, so wait, 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 so I'm overthinking it? Patriarchy, preach. So wait, so I'm overthinking it? That's a that's well okay. That's so when I say question. that I don't hear your voice, I just mean like in general, I don't really hear people's voices when I'm reading their texts. That's so, so weird. Like I hear every single voice you. that that somebody te when I'm reading it. I hear their voice. I think you're more of an audible learner, whereas maybe I we're am. visual learners. Yeah. And I think maybe for women, because we have to contextualize the entire world in order to know how we're going to live in it in any given moment in time, that we've just sort of learned innately how to just categorize things. Otherwise, we'd never be able to get out of bed in the morning. Am I speaking truths right now? I'm speaking truth. Well, but also when we write, um, like when I write a text, I make sure that I've got like the context in there like the emojis and the i want you to hear my voice in right. my text like i i'm intentional about that when my husband texts me there's none of that i mean i read his email sometimes to people and i'm like this is how you email people <laughs> it's like bullet point bullet point bullet right. point. well malika you, well you know? malika i think you agree with me you're very thorough yes you 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 cover everything yes you, you probably mm -hmm. Uh, put it through something and look for spelling errors. You you uh, you <laughs> checked it twenty times for a one sentence text, which I commend you for because everyone's in a rush. And I that's the other thing I think is if it's a conversation of truth and a conversation you're having a conversation of something that's serious. People don't take the time to do that. We and know that's you, the misconception. but we know you well enough to know that when your texts are short, there's a lot more to be said. But you're just wherever you are and we're just like when i'm like ask you a whole bunch of things you're like no i'm like okay well he's probably <laughs> he's probably he's producing three shows right now and yeah. on a plane yeah. and dealing yeah. with his family so i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna fill in all the blanks that right. i needed to have things well, but brooke also it's because of our level of our relationship yeah. it's te our te telepathy it's telepathy yes. at that point personal yes. Yes. relationship with yeah. each other yeah. there yes, is sure. there yeah. where yeah. we know that there's unconditional love yeah. so i think it's a safe space yeah. once you get you start to move into like the acquaintance realm or maybe the work realm yeah or a place where you're not exactly sure who you, you know, are to each other what that relationship is yeah. that's where you start to really overthink yeah things, yeah, right? yeah yeah and, and also it's how you feel about yourself yeah because it's a lot of it secure if you you know you love yourself yeah i mean when people text you whatever the heck they text you you're even like, if it was give, hurtful yeah, you're able give. to kind of take that within that mindset right. where you're like, okay, well, this person's full of crap, yeah, but okay. you know, like I'm not going to take it personally and right. I'm going to write back with my values yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in, in my head so that I'm still presenting myself the way I right. want to. So the, you know, to get back to your original question about all the different topics, we talk about online dating, we talk about loneliness, we talk about how social media is impacting us, the positivity bias, you know, that we put our best selves out there. Right. Um, we talk about relationship creation and maintenance. Um, I mean, it just runs the gamut. All right. Well, I would love to talk more about this. We're out of time. Ah. You are awesome. Make sure you go check out the show. Uh, yeah. Tell everybody the name of the show again, Malika. Communication podcast, but just look up my name, Malika Dudley. Yeah. Just, yes. just Google. You'll find her. Ever. Make sure you follow her on Instagram and Facebook too, because I usually go to her for my weather now. <laughs> I don't even go to the news stations anymore. I just like somebody says, "Hey, there's a storm coming." I just pull up Malika's You're name. Like, not unless Malika Man, says so. Sleep. Congratulations on everything. You know, I'm always proud of you. Please give my best to the guys. Ohana. Proud love you too. Maui no ka oi. Make Maui sure no you ka subscribe Maui no ka oi. Uh, and uh, leave us a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it's a Hawaii thing. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Love you, girl. It's a